welcome. I thought we could spend a couple of weeks on these six questions that Gabor Mate has, because they're all pretty deep. I don't have a big slide today, because I think this is more what we know intuitively and what we can question and come into as, a, as an inquiry. So I think we'll just um, take a moment to get centered and come in. Make sure that you're here in the room that you're in and the body that you're in and also in the Zoom room that we're in. Just really noticing what is it that's here right now. Take a few deeper breaths. What I found about doing this kind of questioning is really helpful and it can be a little disconcerting sometimes. So for me now, when I do this kind of questioning, I'm much more in alignment than I used to be. And I remember doing this about 15 years ago and just going, wow, I, I, I'm not living the life that I want to live. And then I had a lot of changes that I made just to keep that awareness that we're looking and we're maybe seeing places where we're out of alignment or where maybe we're kind of in alignment, but we would rather do something or we want to fine tune it a bit. So to really stay present with the kindness piece as we're looking can I still be kind? Can I see this as information? I don't necessarily have to act on it or not right away. And it's going to look different for everybody. So sometimes when we see, you know, this is a relationship or a friendship that's not healthy for me, we might set different boundaries. We might engage with the person about it. We might do our own ter- internal work about it. There's lots of different variations on how we might respond to the information. So it's just information. And then once we have the information, then we're able to decide what we're going to do. And that might be a longer term process. It might be more immediate. The Gavar Mate, When the Body Says No, is a book that many of us have read or heard about it. We have the basic concept of it. And what he's really saying is that In our culture, women especially, and also some men, are conditioned to believe that our interests and creativity and what we bring to the world is around serving other people. It's not really around ourselves. So part of the reason, he says, is that so many women, so many more women than men have certain kinds of cancers, certain kinds of autoimmune diseases, is because of that conditioning. So it's helpful, whatever your gender is, it's helpful to look into what is my conditioning and how can I be free? So let's dive into that. Let's look at those questions. All right, so this is the first question that we're looking at. The way we would know or the way we would get information about this is somatic mindfulness. So as you're beginning the inquiry to really be present to yourself, your body, what's going on with your breath, what are the thoughts in your mind? And then in my life's important areas, so you could think about what area you want to look into, or it might kind of narrow down during the process. But what am I not saying no to? So this is something we're either agreeing to with a yes, or we're not making clear that there's a no. And we end up doing things and seeing people and in relationships and sometimes our job where we have a pretty deep no. We might know that we're stressed. We might know a little bit about that. But this is a a time when we can go into it more deeply. What am I not saying no to? Long before we say yes or no, we have a feeling about that in our body. That's what we're really looking for is some kind of an energetic response, a tightening often. What happens in your body when you ask that question? And then when an answer comes, you look into that answer a little bit more deeply to stay with the feeling, the felt sense of that as well. This could be literally anything in your life. To use an example of a friendship, maybe, we might be spending time with somebody that 
we don't enjoy spending time with or someone who makes us feel kind of incompetent or maybe as somebody that just always talks about themselves and we don't really feel like we have a, a dialogue. So that's a fairly common, somewhat innocuous example, but it's not really that innocuous. So what is it that comes to mind for you? And as you're doing that, keep in mind that you could always do tapping on your forehead. If there's an image of a person or of some words, you could put that in a frame, look at it across the room, all of those tools that we use for staying present. You could hold your own hand. Stay aware of what's happening in your body. Notice your breath. And then if you were to do a reverse inquiry, so we're saying something that we're pretty sure isn't entirely true because we want to find or, or elicit what might be the underground or the unconscious resistance. So whatever it is, I'm fine with telling that person I don't want to spend time with them anymore. See what happens. Whatever it is that you're working with, put it into a reverse inquiry. And you can stay with that a little bit longer, or you can move on to the second one. So as we're looking at something, you know, we think, well, you know, I don't really want to hurt that person's feelings. You know, I used to have a lot of fun together, and now it just seems like I'm interested in things they're not, and vice versa, or I, you know, I'm, I'm experiencing more respectful relationships, more equal and interesting relationships, and it's time for me to leave that relationship behind. So you might be thinking about, well, you know, it doesn't cost me that much. I'm just, you know, it's a couple hours a week or whatever it is. And if it's something like your job, like what you do for a living or, or something else that has higher stakes, then it's harder to say no. So let's look into what might be going on in your life, physical, emotional, and interpersonal. So we might be talking about autoimmune diseases and things, but we also have a bunch of other things that are maybe less intense or smaller, but more chronic, like rashes, fatigue, headaches, all of these different ways that when we say no, we have a different experience than when we don't say no. So are any of these an issue for you in your life right now? And emotional, you know, we feel sad, alienated, bored. We're not as interested in our life as we were before. And then looking at that resentment, when we're in a relationship we don't want to be in, or when we're being treated in a way that's not okay with us, we we resent it. We might get angry, but for sure, if we can't show up safely as we are with full authenticity, then we're not going to have a close relationship. And it can be really corrosive. Tuning into that as well, is there resentment? What does that feel like? Where is it in your body? Is it thoughts? And what response in your body relates to that? And then the third question, what have I been overlooking? So if we kind of clear the slate a little bit and just look at, are there any warning signs? How would I know? How would my body tell me if there's something I'm doing that it doesn't want to do or that I don't want to do? So we're looking at things that are, that can be more subtle. So in this section of of the myth of normal from Gabor Mate, it's called before the body says no. So it's before we get a hard stop on something. Before the pain is so bad, we can't handle it anymore. Or before we're deep in some kind of a depressed, bored state. 
before we're spending half of our week ruminating about what happened and catastrophizing about what might come next. What are the more subtle or maybe smaller signs? Take some time, we'll take some time with this. So notice what's in your body as you're scanning for that. This could be a feeling of dread. We'll often feel that in our belly, a heaviness in our chest. And these are often not clear cut. There's often things that we want about something and things that we don't, especially with relationships with other people. So it's not like there's a right or wrong answer here. This is more of an exploration of what am I not tuning into? And if we give it a few minutes to sit with that, what does my heart know about this? And you could work with this one issue that's come to mind, or you could do it as a broader inquiry. What am I not saying no to? And we can reverse engineer this by looking at, okay, I have a, a rash on my hands. What does that have to say? And we just tune into the sensation or the symptom. Ask the body, why is this here? You take awareness of your breath, sensations in your body. Notice if you're kind of in a flight response, if you're losing track and just thinking about something else. And as we're doing this, see if you can maintain an atmosphere of kindness and patience. Just because you see something doesn't mean that you have to do something about it or not in a certain way, not right away. Sometimes we just see it and we're able to say, I'm not comfortable with that, or I'm not going to do that. Or, you know, when you say it like that, I feel sometimes there's an ongoing negotiation, especially if it's relationship issues, relationships of any kind. And part of the kindness piece is not shaming ourselves for having this experience of going along with things that aren't really what lights us up. We have a lot of habits. We have a lot of evolution in our bodies, in our mammal bodies that says you got to fit in. So if you're to let the inquiry come to a bit of a rest, offer yourself some kindness, kind, patient attention. Notice what it is that you saw. And then notice as well, what could I say yes to? So to bring in the other side of the equation, if I say no to this in a small way or a big way, what does that open up for me? What could I say yes to? Again, we're just noticing what's coming up. What does that feel like? Take a deep breath. If I say no to this, what might I say yes to?
And it might mean in this friendship example that we take a risk to share something and we get the benefit of a more authentic, deep, real relationship with someone. Or maybe it doesn't work out with them and we limit the amount of time and then we have time for other people or other things. So it could look a lot of different ways. What might I say yes to? Let yourself really feel that in your body. Visualize that. You notice the mind might come in with a bunch of butts. It's okay, we can let that be known, but also not let that be the focus just for another minute or so. Imagining into and opening into the yes. And then bring the inquiry to a close. Open your eyes, move around a bit.